All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking Auburn football. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to the channel. So always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. Really want to invite you to scan through all the videos that I've done. Quite a few, man, almost approaching the 700 video mark. I really appreciate you guys for your support and actually listening to this stuff that we talk about. As it relates to the Auburn Tigers almost on a daily basis, if you averaged out the videos produced, averages out to almost two per day. But, of course, we're not on every day. Mostly every day. Good news going on in the Auburn world. Auburn basketball actually defeated South Carolina to get back on track 80-67. to After some poor shooting in the last couple of games, Bruce Pearl actually did predict he tried to tell us non-believers that this Auburn team was not perfect and that they would eventually lose a game. Of course, we didn't think they would lose two in a row. But now that we've gotten Bruce Pearl's inevitable prediction out of the way, hopefully the Auburn basketball team can get back on track. Other good news for the Auburn Tigers is the retention of Kevin Steele for at least three more years. You know, Kevin Steele has been around for a little while under Tom Osborne out at Nebraska. Had some stints at Tennessee. Nick Saban coached, uh, helped develop Kevin Steele as well. Kevin Steele also had a stint at LSU prior to coming to Auburn. Now, there are several reasons why this is a good thing. Of course, for obvious reasons, it's great to retain a coach that's been, I mean, just highly successful, especially in comparison to prior coaches in recent years. In the top 20 in most statistical categories, teams have a hard time scoring against me, only averages about 17 points per game. And he definitely has pieced together a very good staff. Uh, these guys play very good on defense. Personnel-wise, he's done some, a great job of recruiting, especially at the defensive line and linebacker positions. I'm starting to see recent upgrades in the secondary, which is going to be very, very key for Auburn, especially in defending the deep routes, which I think was one of their Achilles heels for the last couple of years. They gave up a lot of big plays, especially last year, which changed the trajectory of a few games. Now, outside of the surface level reasons why Kevin Steele's retention at Auburn is absolutely phenomenal, there are a couple of things I'd like to point out. Number one, usually when you have such a long tenured coach, at Auburn, I mean, not at Auburn, but just in college football in general, you start to see somewhat of a disconnect. You start to see, because you're starting to see it with coordinators and head coaches who are bowing out or taking less challenging roles because the speed of the game, the level of communication with the players has changed. Offenses are starting to really evolutionize year in and year out because you look at what happened down at LSU. No defensive coordinator was particularly ready for that type of offense because it's not something that is done across the board, at least not to where it's nor, a, a, a normalcy. But now that LSU has led it to, you got to think that college football coaches are going to start looking into this type of offense more often than not. Now, do I think it's going to work at the same level that LSU had success at? I don't think so because I just don't think defensive coordinators are going to allow schematically to be fooled that often. Kevin Steele actually was one of those coaches that were not necessarily fooled by this. Dude has been around for a long time, and he's seen variations of this type of offense. It just so happens that usually on the college level, you just don't have the skill set between, well, the skill set combination-wise between the defensive line, linebackers, and secondary Usually collectively, unless you're an NFL team, it's really difficult to stop this type of offense because mainly the skill set is not there. I mean, you can come up with the, all the formations that you want, but usually the skill set is not there. And we saw it even at the level of Clemson, who recruits some of the better players in the country, were absolutely outclassed against LSU this year. Now, let's go back to the point. The reason why I think Auburn retaining even such a tenured coach as Kevin Steele is because of the fact that he's fully engaged. 
what let me become what well what made me become a true believer in Kevin Steele was the approach in the LSU game. You could tell that this thing was strategically planned out, obviously. Film review to the T. His players perform very confidently and very aggressively as if they had confidence that this was going to work. Most teams, when you saw them try this variation of the 317, you could tell they didn't believe it was going to work, and they seceded back to their old habits. Linebackers going back to their natural instincts, but you can tell Auburn's defensive personnel zeroed in on this. They bought all the way into their assignments in the 317 defense. Of course, they still allowed 500 yards, but I'm telling you, those were the most hard-earned 500 yards that LSU had all year. And in a, in a game like this, or a game like that, where Auburn takes on LSU, you want to force LSU to be balanced. And that's what Auburn forced LSU to do. And they didn't allow the big plays. They, they you know, dummied. Joe Burrow down to only seven something yards per pass. And that's what you have to do. You're not going to necessarily stop it. And and Kevin Steele understood that. But you got to find a way to manage it. And you have to find a way to where the big plays are not a factor. That's why I like Kevin Steele, because even as a tenured coach, he's fully engaged in the activities of his team. He's not going to just go out there without a plan. Out of laziness. Also, you know, you look at the recruiting. He's still, I mean, they're still bringing in some some top-notch players, some pretty good players. And they're bringing in more so, especially in the secondary, the type of players that you need in the SEC. You need a little bit of height, kind of told on them with guys like Javaris Davis. And you need strength. You need some guys that can also run as well in that secondary. And with what Auburn has coming in, in this 2020 recruiting class, along with Jamie and Sherwood and Smoke Monday, I think Auburn is in a position. And then you look at the schedule. I mean, you look at the 2020 schedule, uh, lines up very nicely. If, if you were to predict, let's just say you were to predict a outcome schedule-wise, just based on the schedule, I mean, Auburn is easy 10 and I mean, I'm looking at 10 and 2. You know, just uh, probably probably will wind up surrendering either Georgia, Alabama, or LSU, in my opinion. I think LSU might even be uh, more manageable this year with some of the attrition that they have going on down there. Georgia's going to have, in my opinion, Georgia's going to have one of the best rosters in college football. It's going to have to do some things with their offensive line. Um, Hopefully Auburn will be able to be successful with flipping Broderick Jones out of Lithonia, Georgia. We've talked about this ad nauseum here on the channel. So either way, big news for Auburn with retaining Kevin Steele. I think it's, it's perfect. You know, you could continue that level of continuity with your coaching staff. Um, Woodson leaving to go to Florida State. Yes, that's a big deal. But losing Woodson and Kevin Steele would have been lethal for this particular defense and especially having to revamp the offensive staff as well with a new offensive coordinator in Chad Morris. I think this is probably one of the biggest home runs for Auburn in the offseason because Kevin Steele, after the performance this year, especially duly noted the LSU game, a lot of people knocking on his door. War Eagle to Kevin Steele, Auburn Tigers. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. As always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle.